Today I will be assembling the SaneSmart 3018 Pro MX3 CNC machine. This is the upgraded version of the 3018 Pro machine. It has auto homing end stops, touch um, plate, so you're able to detect the thickness of your material and everything. And look forward to actually going to use this. First off, the instructions to owe you to grab these motors, warm them, get a coupling, make sure to pay attention to the size on here. They use the small hole, not the larger hole. And then also grab four of these guys here of the little screws that go on them. And then the two millimeter Allen key. Yeah. I like that they use this box, but wow, it can be interesting to get them out with your fingers. Okay, so I'm going to set these in. And make sure every hole has them in it. And I'll get back as soon as I finish that. Okay, so now that I have in every hole one of the little screws that are with the two millimeter Allen key, I'm going to take this, pay attention to which one side has the flat, which is right here on mine. There we go, it's in focus. And then stick it on, screw, let me get a better angle one on or so that it meshes with the flat area a lot easier and then once you get that tight enough so now it is on there nice and tight let's i'm loosening it up and i'm just adding a teeny bit of clearance there you go you should be able to see that so it's enough to rotate freely but it is almost touching in there. There is clearance. There you go. And then you can see through that. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to tighten this one up here and just make sure everything is nice and snug because you do not want these guys coming apart while it is in motion. Okay, so now that we have everything laid out, we are going to have the panel facing this way, the L shape, and then the motor with the wires facing this way. There you go, it's in focus. And then those two are going to go together like this. And these four screws will hold it together. Again, using the M3, not the M2. Allen wrench. If I can get this guy to stay on. And uh, those just go in four holes around the corners to hold it all together. We'll hold the motor in place and I will get back to you as soon as I finish screwing these four in for the next step. Now that we have that done, we're going to grab our two ABS spacers like this. We're going to grab our two longer M3 screws that have the Phillips head on top. And we're also going to grab a limit switch. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a small assembly using the limit switch. Stick a screw through the top and the bottom. So it sticks through. Then we're going to slide spacers on over here. And we're going to go grab the screwdriver that comes with the kit, which is nice that they actually include Phillips head. And set it on right next to the motor collet. And just screw that into this phenolic um, resin plate. I think I pronounced that right. Now that 
that goes in and good. Let's change this tight enough. We take the two ABS wire holders, which are these guys here, and then the two small screws that are Phillips head. If I could get those on camera, yeah, like that. And we're going to just screw those in right here. Can you see that? Yeah, so we're going to go stick screw through one. Boy, it would be great if my hands were invisible. And then we're going to go into the first hole that's on the side panel and screw it in. If I could get it in, there we go. And tighten that down. Definitely happy they sent stuff for wire management this time. And then grab the next one. And then just stick it in. Now I'll get back to you with the next step after I'm done with this. Okay, so now that we have this piece here done, we're going to move on to the next half of this, which is for the X and Z axis. So we're going to grab that plate which has the bearing in it and also an indention for the um, solder joints on the limit switch so we have to obviously grab a, another limit switch and then grab two more of these little screws that are M3 Phillips heads which are hard to get on camera now we're going to also grab Phillips heads screwdriver so we're going to stick this guy on right here like this inside the groove then grab screw not have the screwdriver try and take it because it's a magnetized screwdriver and just screw it in on the top, which does require a good bit of force because you have to tap this plastic or phallic resin or whatever it's called, not throw the other one off the workbench. Um, don't tighten it all the way until you get both in, otherwise you will end up having um, it stick up more at one and the other and might cause some issues. Yeah, so just tightened one and all the way now that I have it in. Now I can go with this guy and tighten him all the way in. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. And the plug is facing away. And I'll get back to you with the next step. For the next step, we're installing limit switches to the Y-axis. So we'll have both Y-axis plates. Um, keep in mind where the pockets are have those facing up. We have four wire holders. We have eight of the little screws and two limit switches. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick the limit switches on. There's only one way you can really go, but the front limit switch where the actual switch is, is where the two screws are because that's where the mounting points are and that's going to go in there and screw on and then the same thing for the other one it's just going to go on right like this and this plate is technically upside down it's supposed to go like this and I'll be back once I get those screwed in okay so now that we have that done it screws there and the screws on this one what we're going to do is we're going to go in these two spots here and these two spots here right behind the limit switches we're going to screw in the wire holders to keep everything nice and neat and I'll get back as soon as I'm done with that so we have the limit switches and the wire holders on these two plates now next we're going to grab our two 
aluminum profiles that are 20 by 40s, which are these guys here. And we're going to grab eight M5 by 20 um, bolts. If I can grab those. Sure. These guys here. And we're going to assemble this frame and have the limit switches facing in. So it's going to go in, limit switches facing in, bars right like this. Oh, you can't see the top one. So, like this. I'm going to go ahead and stick the screws in for all that, um, not tighten them all the way, and then get back to you. Okay, so now that I have all the screws in and still loose, um, also forgot to mention before, make sure you have the little feet right here facing down on both sides. Now it's done like this. You want to make sure it's all flat. All feet are touching the ground and it's on a flat surface. And then I'm going to go around and tighten it up and make sure that it stays flat. Otherwise, you'll end up where the machine might have some wobbles, so we'll do this a little bit whenever you push on it. This just makes sure that your base is square, which is definitely beneficial whenever you're trying to do some accurate machining, and also if you want less noise, because all the vibrations from the spindle will cause um, a good bit of racket just from this guy vibrating. Almost done with that here. This machine is right now facing backwards. Um, the front plate, you're able to tell because it has Sane Smart information on it about the machine. And, yep, see, I, I tightened it too much. Now you got this wobble. I'm gonna go and fix that now. Okay, now that we have this where it no longer wobbles, I'm sorry, wrong flat spot tip no longer have the wobble issue whenever you mess with it, we can move on to the next step. We're going to grab the two shorter linear rods. There's four of them in all. So we're grabbing the shorter ones, these guys. We can put the other ones away. We're grabbing four of the bearings, which are these guys here. Keep in mind how you have the holes placed. These holes are going to be facing apart like this when on the smooth rods. And then also we have four M5 by 20s um, right here. So start this off. Just going to grab smooth rod, slide on these two. Again, we have the center here. Holes are facing away from the center. And there's same thing on this guy right here. Holes are facing away from the center. Now we're going to go over to right here. We're going to stick it in our machine. We have this hole right here. And we're going to, that's where we'll screw it in. And we'll do this on the front and the back for both sides. And I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done with that. Okay, so now that we have these guys in. I still have them loose. Um, I won't be tightening those until I have the bed on. Just some up to make sure everything's nice and square. And for the next step, we're going to grab the shorter threaded rod. We're going to grab another motor like we did in step one. And we're going to grab four of the M3 by 14 screws. Let's pull this back so you can actually see. And then we're grabbing a spring and T copper nut. So with the spring and the T copper nut, we're going to first off to, oh, also, I almost forgot, we're grabbing the nylon mount for the Y axis, which is this guy here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to actually be easier. So we're going to thread it on right like this. And we're just going to make it go on a good bit down, not too far. And then we're going to grab this guy 
and we're going to thread it on too. And then we want them to both meet up and have some tension in between them because this is going to remove backlash in the system and make it a more accurate machine. And actually, you know what? I'm sorry, I did that wrong. So you don't want this guy down all the way. I don't know why I stuck it down that far. So have it where it's just partially on, like this. Then slide the other guy on, push it in. Uh, again, have it where it's just flush. Like this. Probably not in focus. Now push it all the way in and start threading. There we go. Now it removes play in the system by applying pressure in another direction. Otherwise, you need tolerance in between the threads and the um, threads on the screw would end up being um, play. So this applies pressure in both directions for that. And so we're gonna take this guy and we're going to stick it in here. Um, I personally just have this copper T piece facing towards the back of the machine where the motor's gonna be. And we're going to slide it in and then slide it through the bearing at the bottom and you can push it up a little farther through. There we go, it's in. And then now I'm going to grab this motor here. I'm going to slide it into place. And you see the lead screw does stick out slightly here. I'm going to then tighten this in, and I'm going to go and do these two screws here and tighten each one of them in on each side and then use these um, M3 by 14s to screw the motor in. And I'll be back as soon as I'm done with that. Sorry about the continuity errors. I made a mistake in the first recording that, so I'm just gonna go back and fix it instead of having you go through all the steps. This motor is supposed to be facing to the side the same side that the cable ties are on. Uh, originally I said it was supposed to face up. That is not the case. The bed will run into it in that. Um, now, back to where I was before without the continuity error. Okay, so now that we have this tightened up, I would recommend using a thread lock, like, like Loctite or super glue on it. Also, make sure that your plug is facing up. And this guy, I should move to the middle to make the next step easier, and then all these guys, we want to have them facing up, like this. And then we're going to grab 10, 30, um, 16s, well, 30 by M6 nuts, which are these guys here. They have the T-shape. Pay attention to their profile, um, because that is going to be important, especially the slanted edges here, if you can see that. So these will be facing up just like this in the next step. And then we also need, I don't know, grab nine in that shot, um, 10 in six by 16 bolts. These guys are the largest ones in the kit. And what we're going to do is we're going to Pay attention to the orientation of this again, and go through and very loosely screw on to each hole for this area here, these bolts. I don't need this, why am I doing that? This will be to connect the bed in the later step. But see how you have all the space there? I don't know how you see that, but yeah, there's a lot of space in between. And that's what you want to keep. You really only need it to just catch. So you could have this much space and be okay. Um, don't thread in too much. Otherwise, it'll make the next step harder than it needs to be. Okay, now we have all them on. And they're all facing this way. Here, I'll give you a better look at that. Never mind, only one stayed up. What we're going to do is we're going to... 
sure they're all facing up and down. And then grab the bed and have the side with only three grooves, not the side with four grooves. The three groove side, and we're just going to slide it over where each one in engages. And then we're going to loosely tighten it down where it still has some play. And I'll come back to you after that I finish doing that. Okay, now that we have this loose, we're going to do something a little counterintuitive. We're going to remove one side's limit switch. And once I get that off, I'll be right back. Now that we have this limit switch off, what we're going to do is we're going to run this all the way over to this side until it makes contact. And then once we're done with that, we're going to keep going until we get nice and tight. And what this will do is we'll make sure these two guys are aligned. And then now we can actually kind of just a little bit. Lift the plate to center. You can either eyeball this or measure it. I would highly recommend measuring. Then tighten it up and it will hold the plate in place. So just manually doing that. Keep in mind, I do not have the motor plugged in. And that is, it, don't, don't do this if you have the motor plugged in for some reason. What will happen is it can mess up your stepper drivers. So now we have this guy tightened. What we're going to do is we're going to tighten these two front guys all the way. And then also tighten the middle one all the way. And once we're done with tightening all these guys nice and tight, you want these guys to be pretty tight because if they start slipping, you're going to have issues. What we're going to do is we're going to run the bed all the way over to the other side after removing its limit switch. So we're going to go in, we're going to remove this limit switch, run over to the other side, and then tighten this down, and then install this limit switch back and then also push this back over to this side, not necessarily all the way, however far you can get away with, to install this limit switch back. And that's going to make sure we have a nice and square machine. Also, we need to, while it's over on this side, I forgot to mention this, make sure this guy is tightened on this side. And be careful it does not fall over. I have a feeling you don't want your machine to fall over. And then once it's back on the other side, we'll tighten that too. I almost forgot about that one step. Okay, so I finished tightening up both sides over here, sticking the limit switches back on over here and on the other side right here. Everything here is tightened up and motors facing the correct direction. So now, Let's move on to the next step, which is going to be to take these two guys here and then stick on these, which are, you have in total um, 12 of each and it's 20, um, not 20 M5 and an M5 by 16 bolt. And those guys, over here. So you want to make sure your limit switch is facing in for this panel. You stick the bolt through this side, and you stick a nut on. Just barely thread it on, just like with the other. No. And then for the other side, you do the same thing. Where you stick it on through on the motor side, you just go through, you barely thread it on, so there's a ton of play, and that's going to allow you to easily slide it into the side panel there. I'll come back as soon as I finish filling all these holes. I almost forgot to mention, you do the T on these nuts, same as, way as on the others, so that you have the angled sides on the top part. Okay, so now that we have all of these guys in, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure they're all facing the same direction. Then we're going to take this guy, and we're just 
just going to slide in this groove, make sure all the bolts go through, grab the wrench, push down, and then get it in there, but not tight, just want it loose. Essentially finger tight, but you still have to use the wrench. And once you're done with this side, you do the exact same thing to the other side. And also, I forgot to mention, I did make a mark right here on the bar that is 31 and a half millimeters um, from right here. So before the base plate starts, 31 and a half millimeters from the start of this bar here over. I did the same thing on the other side too. And now I'm going to go around to the other side and I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so now we have this guy on, both of these on, they are very loose. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two 2020 aluminum profiles and then we're taking four um, M5 by 20 bolts, which are these guys here. And we're going to screw these in, but again, keep everything loose. It makes life so much easier have starting off loose. And you can just tighten it later. We're going to put one in the top and then tighten it on the other side and then put one in the bottom holes and then tighten it on the other side. And then remember, keep it all loose. And both of your end stops should be at the inside here. Right there and there. I'll be back as soon as I finish getting those guys in. Okay, so now we have both of these guys in here nice and loose. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the two last and longest smooth rods, the X and Z axis assembly, along with four or more of the M5 by 20s. And then we're going, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick the smooth rods through the assembly. And then we're going to put it up here and the two holes directly above and below the motor and wherever the third hole is the machine, other part of the machine, we're just going to screw it in and again, keep everything loose. Whenever you tighten stuff early, it makes it a pain to have a square machine. You need a square machine to keep everything accurate. Um, I'll be back as soon as I finish this. And it looks like we have almost a complete machine. There we go. We have these in, and they're still loose. And then now what we want to do next is grab another T-nut and spring. And then the longer threaded rod. And what we're going to do is slide it through this hole here where there is the bearing and then partially thread it onto here so it's about flush like we did the other axis and just slide it all the way forward until we get inside this part push through thread it in and then we're going to thread it so we have it coming out the other side a good bit now we're going to just shove the entire assembly over and into right here. Granted, you might need to loosen these guys up. I think mine are a little tight because you should not have um, much of the rod sticking out of this side over here. The other side, that is, there we go. Yes, it should be just about flush. Then you can screw this in. Again, I re highly recommend using um, a thread lock of sorts. It could be super glue if you don't want to spend your money on Loctite or anything like that. Just, you don't want these screws coming loose. And look at that. We have all axes moving and a very not flat table. Okay, so for the next step, 
we're simply just going to grab the motor, which does have capacitors appears on the back of it. Um, personally, I prefer to keep the positive side on the side on that side of the machine. Um, I'm not sure if this video will be mirrored or anything. Um, and this bolt here will need to be loosened beforehand. So we've got to loosen that up. Might require a little bit of prying too. So get a flathead screwdriver, stick it in here, give it a little twist. Not too much because you don't want to risk damaging anything. And then just get it flush there and then we can tighten down the motor. Assuming that I did not accidentally make it unset from the nut. And this is also how you would swap to the laser module. Um, you would simply drop the motor, stick the laser module in, and be good to go. Um, I believe this version does work with the laser module. Um, if it does, I will do a video on that. I just know it's a little different on the board for that. Now we're going to go around and make sure to tighten all these screws. Um, make sure it's lined up with the mark made earlier. If it is, we can tighten it up a little bit more. I'm not going to go completely tight on that side yet. I just want it to be one of them tight after it's confirmed to be aligned, because that is definitely important. Then we're going to start off by, like we did last time, running the machine all the way to one side. We're not going to do ramming like we did last time. We're just going to run it over until you have the limit switch pressed and tighten your lead screw. Oh, not your lead screw, your smooth rods. And then in the back, your other ones. And then we're going to move to the other side and do the same thing. And I'll get back to you after I'm done doing this with the next step and once this side's tightened and that side. Okay, so I got these tightened down, top and bottom, pushed up the other side, tightened down the other side, um, got both of these bars tightened down, and then also did these base plates on both sides, tightened all those down. Made sure to do the base plates last, and only tighten down the side that the spindle was all the way over on. That allows it to have the smoothest movement possible. In assembly before on my 3018 Pro, I did not do that, and it ended up having um, issues with binding the first time I assembled it. So do it in that order for sure. For the next step, what we need is we need to get the acrylic back plate, which is the insulated board they call it in the instructions, the actual board four of these guys which are M5 by 14s, which I left one in the box. We have four of those. Then we have four more of the nut 20 M5s these guys here. Same thing that we used on the side parts there. And then we have four ABS spacers that are the white kind. And the way this goes is you get one of these guys, one of the bolts, you stick it through, and then you stick a spacer on. Then you do the backboard. And lastly, you stick the nut on, and then you go do that for all four corners, and I will come back as soon as I finish that. Okay, so we have all the spacers, nuts, and bolts on the board and the protection backplate. So we're going to take the machine, rotate it around, grab it so that the VGA port and USB port and power port all face this way. We're going to then align all of these nuts and then just press it right up against here and you can scoot over wherever you want personally I like having mine all the way to the side and then just go around and tighten it which 
you can tighten it all the way on this one. Granted, don't muscle it because you can mess the acrylic up or the PCB. There are not washers in use, which makes sense because that would take up more space and there's not really any space on the circuit board for that. Now it's on and mounted and you've got the power switch, VGA port, USB port, power port, in stops, this is emergency stop, and there's probe here also, I believe. And then you have your X, Y, and Z, along with a few other ports on the side, which are for the laser, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll Now for the next step, I actually realized that this needs to be scooted over to the side just enough so that you can access the limit switch right behind it. Uh, it's my bad. I'm still used to my 3018 Pro, which does not have that issue because there's, well, it's not a smart printer. So scoot over to the side enough where you can see the limit switch right here and then tighten it down or just stick it in the middle. Just don't cover up switches. And then we're going to now get to the wiring. So for that, what we're going to do is grab this bag here out, get all the wires out, and the first thing we're going to do is the X limit switches, oops, dropped one on the floor, and we're going to grab X limit switch 15, which is this one right here, it's the little guy, and that one you do is you just plug it in right here. It's the one I blocked at first. And then it goes into the first location on the board, right down here, which says X limb plus. And that's X limb negative because the coordinates are increasing going along this way and decreasing going along that way. So then for the next one, which is the X limb negative, which is a little longer, a good bit longer actually, what we're going to do is we're going to connect it all the way over here. And get that to connect then we're going to run it through the bar. Not there, this is not plug. There we go. Okay, so also you want generally it's a good idea to have this over on the end where you're going to be plugging in. Make sure if you have to do any wire stuff or management, super easy to find. So we're going to take this guy, run it behind the board all the way over here, tuck it down in this groove here, right like that, and then plug it in right next to the other one, just like that. And okay, so before we move on to doing the y-axis in stops, which is the board in the back, and all the other ones, first off, almost forgot about these guys. We're going to connect up using the small screws again um, and the little clips. We're going to connect those up to the two holes in the back right here and right here and then also on the side right here and here opposite of the other guys and we'll just connect it up the same way and I'll be right back once I'm done with that. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my Y limit switch plus, if I can get this in focus, and I'm going to go plug it in to the limit switch. Tilt this back so you can see. Right in here, at the back of the limit switch. Because whenever the machine is moving towards the back, it is increasing in the coordinate plane. And whenever it's moving towards the front, it is decreasing in the coordinate plane. And then we're 
going to plug this in right next to the x limit switch negative because it goes x, y, z, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And now I'm going to grab the y limit switch negative, go all the way to the front of the machine, and plug it into the front limit switch. Now I'll turn this around so you can see. It. And plug it into the front limit switch right here that we installed earlier. Here, I'll tip the end up. That one. So we're going to plug it in here. And then run it through this channel. I'm going to run it through the upper one, just but you can go through the lower one too. You just run it through that channel. And now we're going to flip the machine back around. And we're going to plug in right next to X limit plus. Now before I move to the Z axis, I'm going to first off grab these two guys. The longer one is for the X axis, shorter ones for the Y axis. And all this does is you set it right, you make sure your wires are down in this groove. And then you just stick it directly over and pop it in place and it will make sure your wires are out of the way. Just nice and convenient because these wires will easily get snagged if they are not held in place. And you just go around and you pop it in place. Make sure it's all the way down. Makes everything look nicer too. And then now for the other one, I'm going to flip it back up like this again. And just going to go along this top groove over here. I'll be back as soon as I'm done with that. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to move to the motors for the X and Y axis. Here is the X axis motor cable. It's the short one. And we're just going to plug the larger pin side, because you have the two sides. There's a six pin and a four pin. We're gonna plug the six pin into the motor and the four pin into the first port on the top of the board, which is for the X axis. And then we're going to grab the Y axis motor one, just this guy right here. And we're going to plug that in. Again, the six pin into the motor on the bottom. And then we're going to run the wires up along the side, wrap them around this side, and then plug it into the second port, which is the Y-axis port. And later I will be zip tying these in place to hold it, just like that. And these wires will be zip tied on the inside. You will see that in a later step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in on the board the Z limit negative, the Z limit positive, the Z axis, and the spindle wire. So first off, let's start off with Z limit positive. And we're going to plug that into the port next to Y limit negative. And we're going to slide this guy down over here. And now we're going to grab, actually while we're at it, we can plug in the spindle one too, which goes right up at the top like this. And then let's also grab the Z-axis motor cable and plug that in too. Um, just don't plug in both C-limit switches at first because it will make it confusing in this next step, which is to grab your housing for cable management. You're going to, let me get a better angle, Sixius. We're going to compress and turn inside out 
the first part, so essentially just shove your finger in and then push all of the little frays in to, until you get something that looks like this. Now we're going to grab the ends of these wires we just plugged in. I want to make sure to cut it to length also because you have way too much of this and we're just going to stick them in here. Slide them all in and you're able to compress like this and make it fit. Now we're going to compress and just keep going like this, like an inchworm basically, until we're all the way through. And then once you get everything out, you're able to just pull it straight through. And try not to fray the other end too much, um, but I'll just end up snipping all the extras. And now we can take the limit switch right here, which is the X positive limit switch, and we can plug it into the top limit switch spot. Let me just turn this around so you can get a better look at what I'm doing. So we plugged it in right here. Let me adjust the position. And then now we're going to take stepper motor one um, wires and we're going to plug it in right up top to stepper motor. Then we're going to take the two motor wires and we're going to plug in the red wire into M plus. And then these do lock in place, which is nice. And then the black wire into M negative. Just right like that. And if you ever have to remove these, there's a little tab on top that you press down and it allows you to slide it off like that. Otherwise, these are pretty much stuck in place. Some of them don't have, um, not all of these styles connectors have the lock though, but this machine does have it. If you pull too hard, you can't get it off, but yeah, nice to have the lock. Now let's flip the machine back around and we're going to grab the Z negative and we're going to plug that in right in the back right here and then feed it through just like we did up front. If you want to you can do the inverted front on both ends of it just to make it look nicer. I, I wish I did that however I did not. And I'm now regretting it. And we're just going to work it through and I'll come back as soon as I'm done working it through. Okay, so now that I have it worked through and hanging out right here, I'm going to take this. First off, I'll rotate the machine around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take it and then I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom plug for limit switch right there and then now if you want you can clean all this up which I'm going to do and I'll be back as soon as I'm done cleaning up all the fraying. Okay so now that we have all the cable management done I'm going to slide the machine slightly over so it's more in focus and I'm going to grab four of these M5 by 10 volts I mean eight of them I mean four per side and we're going to add the side panels on because that is much easier to do after you oh, it's easier. after you've done your wire management. And we're also grab, going to grab eight of the little T-nuts that we used before. And I'll be back as soon as I actually know the right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel these guys first. These panels, they have a protective film. Just going to pick out a corner, and it's on both sides, and peel it off the acrylic panels. And then once you get it off of both sides, we're going to grab and stick the bolt in with the nut on the other side 
and then do the exact same operation we did to connect the other these side plates for the Z and the X axis. And I'll be back as soon as I'm done connecting all that up. Okay, so I screwed the side panels on. While I was at it, I also did wire management. So I did the um, two spots here where you're supposed to stick the zip ties through. I did the two here, two here, two on the other back side. What I also did was I zip tied the top of this braided, um, I think it's carbon fiber um, housing and the back of it from fraying. Now I'll rotate the machine around and I also zip tied, stuck a zip tie right here and then one around this post and this wire and I have the two end stops for the y-axis running through this inner edge and up the inside of this side plate while I have the motor wire running along the outside of this side plate up and there's the zip tie for this one. The only, and then I have the covering right here, covering on the inside lower part, well the upper of the two grooves. And that's about it for the wiring. The last thing you have to do though, it which is optional, but if you bought this machine, chances are you're going to want to do it because it's a nice feature, is the um, touchpad for auto homing. And what you're going to do for that is you have, oh, let me just scoot these wires out of the way some. So you have this connector right here at the bottom. I'll try and scoot this a little closer, but where it's still in shot. So we have this here. The first port is communications. Second port is emergency stop. Third port is probe. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two wires um, from the end stop, we're taking the two end wires, and we're going in the first port, which is the communication port, and the last port, which is the probe port. It does not matter which two, um, which order you do, but I'm just going to stick black in communication, and then the um, black and white one in the probe port. And you just slide it in, and tighten it down. And then you're port is all ready to be used and you'll just set this off to the side whenever it is not in use um, but you do have to leave this plugged in unless you want to add plugs which is definitely doable I would recommend getting an in an emergency stop and wiring that up which then would just you would just stick another wire coming out of the communication port and a wire coming out of the e-stop port which is the middle one, and you would um, attach it up to a switch. You can get these nice big red emergency stop buttons, and that works too. There we go, it's all wired up. And this machine is a uh, finished Saints 3018 Pro MX3. All ready to start carving. Um, last thing you have to do is plug it into the computer. Um, thanks for watching and have fun making. Good luck with assembly on your machine. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments.